Brace yourselves, folks. We've rediscovered a lost continent that split off ages ago and has now reappeared on the maps. Find out what this continent is all about, why it was lost for so long, and what we found there in this video, so make sure you stay tuned until the end. And if you like it, I'd be delighted to get a thumbs up and a comment, because that's how we get the algorithm to show this exciting topic to even more people. Thank you guys, and welcome. The Earth has had a really eventful life. Like us humans, its appearance has changed considerably over the course of time. This is what it looked like almost 200 million years ago, for example. At that time, a huge supercontinent called Pangaea existed on Earth. Pangaea was a gigantic puzzle of continents that was gradually formed by the movement of tectonic plates. By the way, here is a super exciting map where someone has placed the position of modern countries on Pangaea or calculated it back. Germany, for example, is a bit squashed together up here on the northern coast of the primordial continent. But Pangaea was not a final state. Around 180 million years ago, the supercontinent began to split apart and two main continents emerged from it, Laurasia in the north and Gondwana in the south. Gondwana was the larger of the two successor continents and comprised the landmasses known today as South America, Africa, India, Antarctica, Australia, and Madagascar. This huge supercontinent stretched across the South Pole and had a truly impressive area of around 73 million square kilometers. But now we are already approaching our lost continent because even Gondwana was not built to last forever. Plate tectonics caused it to gradually break apart, leading to the formation of new oceans and the shifting of continents in different directions. South America drifted westwards, India northwards and Antarctica moved towards the South Pole. This process continued for millions of years and gradually formed the map we see today. And we can still clearly see the traces of this today. Take a look at South America and Africa. You don't have to be a plate tectonics genius to realize that they fit together like a kind of puzzle. Logically, they were also one in the primordial continents of Pangaea and Gondwana. Also, South America and Africa look like a Tyrannosaurus when you put them together, but I don't know exactly what geological theory explains that. But speaking of dinosaurs, we can also use the distribution of fossils today to understand which parts of the Earth belonged together at that time and which did not. With this knowledge, we are now traveling to Australia. 155 million years ago, a piece of land about 5,000 kilometers long, separated from Western Australia and drifted away. This separated piece of land, which was given the name Argoland, has been considered missing ever since. But I can already hear some of you smart Alex objecting. How do you know that? Nobody was there at that time, dude. Yes, but geologists are like detectives. They look for traces of the crime. And here you found a really hot lead. The separated continental part left a gap. Deep in the ocean, there is a hidden basin, the Argo Deep Sea Plain. And deep sea plains are usually found at the edges of continents, suggesting that part of the continent is missing. Elementary, my dear Watson. But where did Argo land disappear to? The researchers realized that Argo land must be somewhere a broken continent can't just disappear, but we had never found it. And that really was one of the greatest mysteries of geoscience. One possibility would have been that Argo land submerged underground and slipped into the Earth's mantle. This is what happened to other lost continents, such as Greater Adria, a landmass the size of Greenland, which probably slid under today's Europe. As a result, we owe parts of our beautiful mountain formations, such as the Alps or the Apennines, to Greater Adria. But the majority of this sunken landmass lies at depths of up to 1,000 kilometers beneath Europe. So you are living above the remains of a lost continent. Jules Verne couldn't have come up with a better idea. But things were trickier with Argoland. It could not be found above or below the ocean. And there was no sign that it had been submerged in the Earth's mantle. One of the researchers involved in the search for Argo land, Dow van Hinsbergen, says, If continents can plunge into the mantle and disappear without geological traces on the Earth's surface, we would have little idea of what the Earth might have looked like in times past. It would be almost impossible to create reliable reconstructions of former supercontinents. In other words, if Argo land really did manage to disappear without a trace, 
that would mean that we wouldn't have a clue what the Earth looked like back then, as the Earth's interior would presumably be teeming with submerged continents. That would be extremely frustrating, of course, because we want to know how the Earth has changed over the ages. But the Dutch researchers were persistent and did not give up the search for Argo land. And the decisive clue came from the aforementioned Deep Sea Basin, whose structure shows that this continent must have drifted to the northwest and finally landed exactly where the islands of Southeast Asia are today. But there was a problem because Argo land did not break into two or perhaps three pieces like other landmasses. No, it decided to shatter into dozens of pieces like a vase thrown on the ground. Or like your Lego artwork that I spent days building. I meant, I meant bring it out here and put it in the kitchen. Oh. Or, as the researcher involved, El Dirt Advocat puts it, the situation in Southeast Asia is very different from that in Africa and South America where a continent has broken cleanly in two. Argoland shattered into many different pieces. This hindered our view of the continent's journey. Why did Argoland shatter so drastically? It's like your Lego artwork again. If the bricks were only put together half-heartedly, then of course it breaks apart much more quickly. And Argoland was probably never a single piece of land to begin with. Instead, it was probably originally an amalgamation of microcontinental fragments separated by older oceanic basins. Researchers call this Argopelago, a neologism made up of Argo land and the English word archipelago. So what does that mean in concrete terms? It means that Argo land still exists, but in a fragmented form. And these small fragmented continental fragments have accumulated over time at roughly the same time in their current location and could be reconstructed as they were once connected to each other. And where, exactly? According to new research, these fragments are now hidden under the dense jungles of large parts of Indonesia and Myanmar. As you can see here in this animation, parts of Argo land today even extend north into the Himalayan region. So from Australia to the Himalayas, now that's an exciting journey. All in all, you could say that Argo land never left. It was in front of Australia the whole time. It was just hidden because it broke into so many splinters. And speaking of which, if you didn't want my heart to shatter into 1,000 splinters, I'd be galactically happy if he subscribed to the channel now, if you haven't already. I know from YouTube stats that over half the viewers haven't subscribed, but it's absolutely free. It helps me immensely, and you'll never miss another galactic video. It's not just land masses that break away from time to time. Ice masses do too. This has just happened in Antarctica where the largest iceberg on the entire planet has decided to start moving. And the satellite images of it are incredible. If you want to take a look and find out why this gigantic ice colossus has come loose and what the consequences could be, then click on the video below. It's really, really exciting. And if you want to support my work, visit my Astro store, especially if you only had socks for Christmas. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next video. Take care, guys.